Hepatic hydrothorax thoracic masterclass. Hepatic hydrothorax HH, is the presence of pleural effusion in a patient with cirrhosis without evidence of other cardiopulmonary disease. It occurs in 5% to 15% of patients with cirrhotic portal hypertension and is associated with high mortality. Pathophysiology, cirrhotic ascites in the peritoneal space occurs as a result of portal hypertension, vasodilation of splanchnic and systemic arteries, and neurohormonal activation resulting in decreased sodium and water excretion. It has been proposed that the combination of positive intra-abdominal pressure and negative intrathoracic pressure facilitates movement of fluid from the peritoneal cavity into the pleural space through defects in the diaphragm. Types of diaphragmatic defects Type 1, no obvious defect, 9.1% to 31.7%, Type 2, blebs on the diaphragm, 36.4% to 41.3%, Type 3, broken defects or fenestrations in the diaphragm, 20.6% to 72.7%, Type 4, multiple gaps in the diaphragm, 1.6% to 9.1%. Site, the right, most cases of HH are right-sided, 59% to 80%, the left-sided, 12% to 17%, bilateral, 8% to 24%, being less common. Presentation, most patients with HH have ascites portal hypertension, and stigmata of end-stage liver disease. The most common presenting symptoms are, dyspnea at rest, 34%, cough, 22%, nausea, 11%, pleuritic chest pain, 8%. In rare cases, HH can present with life-threatening acute tension hydrothorax. Pleural space infection, referred to as spontaneous bacterial empyema, or spontaneous bacterial pleuritis, SBPL, is an important potential complication which can occur as a result of bacterial peritonitis migrating into the pleural space or from invasion of microbes through pleural chest tubes, catheters, or other thoracic instrumentation. Diagnosis The workup generally includes echocardiogram to assess cardiac function and rule out cardiac causes of pleural effusion, chest computed tomography to exclude mediastinal, pulmonary, or pleural lesions or malignancies, abdominal ultrasound to evaluate for hepatic mass lesions, hepatic and portal venous flow, and ascites. Pleural fluid should be sampled by thoracentesis and sent for cell count, differential, gram stain, bacterial culture, protein, albumin, lactate dehydrogenase, LDH, fluid pH, bilirubin concentration. SBPL is typically diagnosed if the pleural fluid polymorphonuclear cell count is greater than 500 or greater than 250 cells per microliter with positive culture, having excluded a paraneumonic effusion or empyema. Medical management, salt restriction, dietary sodium restriction, less than 88 MEQ or 2 grams per day, and which result in a net negative sodium balance, decrease acidic fluid production, and ultimately reduced fluid movement from the peritoneal cavity to the pleural space. Diuretics, a combination of loop diuretics and an aldosterone receptor antagonist may be needed. Co-administration of oral furosemide 40 mg and spironolactone 100 mg daily is preferred, with a goal fluid weight loss of 0.5 to 1.0 kg per day without electrolyte disturbance or renal dysfunction. Splanchnic and peripheral vasoconstrictors including octreotide midodrine and terlipressin increase effective arterial volume and decrease activation of the renin-angiotensin-aldosterone RAA, system, increasing renal sodium excretion. Interventions, transjugular intrahepatic portosystemic shunt tips, fluid accumulation in the setting of cirrhotic portal hypertension occurs when the portosystemic radiant difference between the portal venous and right hepatic venous or inferior vena cava pressure becomes significantly elevated, typically greater than 12 mm Hg, normal is less than or equal to 5 mm Hg. Transjugular intrahepatic portosystemic shunt tips creation relieves portal hypertension by reducing the portosystemic radiant. Although TIPS does not treat the underlying cause of portal hypertension, reduction of the portosystemic radiant does effectively treat many of the complications of portal hypertension including acute and recurrent baroseal bleeding, refractory ascites, and refractory HH. Prevention of accumulation of fluid in the pleural cavity Continuous positive airway pressure CPAP, increases air pressure in the thoracic cavity, thus decreasing the pressure gradient between the peritoneal and pleural cavities and decreasing fluid migration into the pleural space. CPAP has also been used in conjunction with pleurotesis to enhance fluid movement from the pleural to the peritoneal space and allow time to achieve pleurotesis. CPAP, the surgical closure of transdiaphragmatic defects, prevents unidirectional shifting of fluid into the thoracic cavity from the abdomen but is associated with high mortality in those with severely decompensated cirrhosis. CTP Class C 
patients with type 1 defects were treated with mesh covering only, while those with type 2, 3, or 4 defects were treated with mesh with or without suturing. Limitations Diaphragmatic defects closure is performed only in selected patients who have failed or have contraindication to other treatment strategy. Removal of fluid from the pleural cavity, in the setting of refractory HH in patients who are not TIPS or transplant candidates or in patients awaiting transplant, repeated thoracentesis is considered a standard mode of symptom management. Repeated thoracentesis, its placement is associated with a very high complication rate. Complication rate including infectious complications, renal failure, and electrolyte balance, with a 33% mortality rate secondary to empyema and sepsis. Indwelling pleural catheter is a fenestrated catheter that is inserted and tunneled percutaneously into the pleural space to allow for intermittent drainage and facilitate pleurotesis. A pleurovenous shunt is an indwelling catheter which shunts fluid directly from the pleural cavity into the systemic venous circulation. Obliteration of pleural cavity pleurotesis can be considered in carefully selected patients who are not candidates for TIPS or who are refractory to TIP and can serve as a bridge to liver transplant. Although pleurotesis can be achieved by chemical or mechanical methods, the latter is rarely used in patients with HH due to underlying coagulopathy and high risk of bleeding. Liver transplantation, it is the definitive treatment of refractory hepatic hydrothorax. Post-transplant outcomes for patients with HH are similar to those of other liver transplant patients with survival of 70% at 8 years. Thank you for following my channel.